Hi guys and welcome back to today's video. So today I thought I'd do a video based on things that nobody tells you about postpartum. So I am four months postpartum now, Esme is almost 17 weeks. So I've just been thinking about all the things that I think I didn't really know and some of the things maybe I did know but not to quite the extent of what actually happened to me. So um, yeah, let's get straight, straight into it. So the first one for me would be hormones. Obviously, you know that during pregnancy, your hormones change so much. And obviously after birth, of course, they're gonna change. But for me, Esme was in special care for almost two weeks. During, the, um, during her time in special care, me and Sam actually was able to stay with her for two nights. So during them two nights, obviously I was getting up to do her night feeds. So when I was actually getting up to do the night feeds about midnight, I was absolutely freezing. Obviously the hospital was boiling and normally like special care baby units always are. So literally in the room we'd have the fan on, I'd be so hot. But then all of a sudden I'd just get up and I'd be absolutely freezing and like I just couldn't stop shivering. It was just so weird. Like I've never experienced anything like that. Um, and I think that's definitely the, the drop in hormones overnight. Um, so the next thing for me is possibly linked to hormones would be headaches. So obviously no, like during pregnancy and after pregnancy, headaches are quite worrying just because medical professionals speak about um, blood clots and things like that. And um, I can't remember the other preeclampsia, that's what it's called. Um, but for me, obviously that was not a symptom at all. It was just, I think the change in, headache, uh, change in hormones and things like that just caused so many headaches. Every night I was actually taking ibuprofen and paracetamol because I just felt so ill. Um, yeah, I don't think that that lasted too long. Probably by the time Esme came home after almost two weeks, that, that was stopped really. But it was just something that I never really considered or thought that would happen. So another common one really is hair loss. Obviously I know loads of people speak about hair loss and I did kind of have a bit of a brief idea, but not really what happened. So I'm actually four months in and I'd say my hair is falling out more now than ever. It's so, my hair is so disgusting at the minute. It's not even been cut since December due to lockdown. Um, it is booked in next week, thank God. I really need it doing. But the hair, like it doesn't, you can't tell too much like with the consistency because it's so thick still but every night when I have a bath literally so much hair falls out I brush it so much hair falls out it's I don't even know how I've even got any hair left the amount of hair that's falling out it's just honestly crazy but yeah I didn't think I thought maybe like hair loss will probably last like a month or a couple of weeks or something but four months in and it's just non-stop I don't know when it's ever going to stop to be honest um, so the next thing for me is that after you have a baby, you still look pregnant. It's so, so weird. So obviously you give birth and this baby comes out, you think, well, surely my stomach should go down, but that's literally not the case. I think probably for a couple of days, I still had the same bump. It was probably like slightly smaller and not as hard, but there was still a bump there. It was just so weird. Um, so probably now like four months in, it's still like my belly's still slightly hard, but it's Obviously, it's not it's not pregnant anymore. It's just like flabby. <laughs> um, another one linked to my stomach would be the line. I can't really remember what it's called, but you get like some people get like a dark line down the middle of their stomach when they're pregnant. That is still there four months in. I really don't know why that is. I think you get it due to a change in hormones, but I'm really not sure why it's still there four months postpartum, or if it'll ever go. To be honest, or maybe it will just stay there forever. Um, so the next one is about boobs. I don't know whether it's a bit TMI, but probably on about day two or three, obviously milk comes in. I briefly had a bit of an idea about that and I know people said it could be painful. But for me, like I remember leaving special care, Sam picked me up one day and I sat in his car and I was just like, like this. And I was like, they feel so lumpy. And I just had no idea that that would happen. And it was just literally, I could feel like pea sized lumps. And I was like, oh my God, like if this doesn't go, I'm gonna have to go to the doctors. I was really worried about what it could be. But then obviously the next day, like my milk was just coming out. Like I was obviously pumping for Esme. There was so much milk. So yeah, I think it's definitely linked to that. But they were literally so lumpy, so hard. I could barely put my arms down. It was just not a pleasant experience, to be honest. I think that probably for about the first couple of weeks, it was like that just because my body was regulating and getting used to it. And I think about six weeks in, your milk starts to regulate mostly. Um, and then like your milk flow is consistent then moving forward. Um, so similar to that would be like leaky boobs probably <laughs> so obviously I've kind of heard people will say about like leaky boobs and I've seen people have babies and then 
obviously have to change their top because their ba their boobs have leaked unexpectedly. But for me, like, I think it's just something that I didn't consider really. Like, when a baby cries, your boobs just leak. It's very weird. Obviously, my boobs, um, because I've been expressing, my boobs are used to like producing milk on time for Esme every three hours really. But I think that just like hearing a baby cry and then them leaking is just so strange. Also, like in the night, if say in the early days, if I missed a feed or something like that, if Esme slept a little bit longer, then my boobs, like I'd wake up and I'd be soaking wet. Um, obviously you can wear like breast pads and bras and things like that, but for bed, I didn't really want to do that. I think because my boobs were still quite like lumpy and tender just because they were still regulated in the early days. It was just not comfortable wearing bras to bed all the time, but then you'd run the risk of waking up like soaking wet. I woke up many times with like the bed really wet and me really wet. It's just not, not great really. Um, probably the final thing is like hunger. I, I've kind of heard like things about this before and I know that in pregnancy, obviously you, you're quite hungry, but postpartum, I'm literally so hungry all of the time. I think with breastfeeding as well, I need extra calories. But literally, like, I'm just craving things all the time and I just can't stop eating. I know that um, towards the end of my pregnancy, I was really craving, like, cakes and millionaire shortbreads and things like that. And I'm not really, like, a cake person. I don't really eat that sort of thing. But, um, yeah, towards the end of pregnancy, with lockdown, I couldn't just go to the shop and I couldn't get them things. I know, like, once or twice I sent my sister to the shop and said, please get me a millionaire brownie or a chocolate croissant or something like that. But a few times she came back and she couldn't get what I wanted. And I think my cravings maybe weren't satisfied in pregnancy. So postpartum now, I'm just, every time I see a millionaire short bed, I'm like, oh my God, I need it so bad. So that's very strange, but I really need to like curb the eating to lose the weight now because four months postpartum and the baby weight is still on and I still probably look about 20 weeks pregnant. So that's not great. <laughs> um, but yeah, I think that's probably everything for today's video. I can't really think of any other things about postpartum but what I'm going to be thinking about doing as well is a postpartum essentials video so there are just a few things that I've thought about that I used a lot during postpartum or that maybe you would want to use um or maybe the things that you wouldn't really consider to be honest just because when it is your first baby you don't really know what you want what you need or what would be best to buy and you don't really want to waste your money so that's something that I might consider doing in the next few weeks um but yeah if you like today's video please give it a like and subscribe and come back for future videos thank you bye